Good morning. My name is Thomas Gottschling and I am in charge of technical support and marketing at Applic Europe GmbH. Today I would like to present you how Applic's voltage monitoring IC support automotive functional safety design. If you have any questions, please click on the QA icon, which is displayed in the upper right of your PC screen. Um, this is today's agenda. After brief introduction of Applic, I will discuss the automobile revolution and how this impacts functional safety. Lastly, I would introduce a solution for related voltage monitoring from Applic. Applic is a Japanese specialized analog semiconductor manufacturer. We provide semiconductor products and solutions based on our visions of the 3S. We are continuously working to contribute to a greener and more comfortable society through small, smart, and simple semiconductor solutions. This means we are always striving to offer the market more compact, energy saving and easy to use products and solutions. The three S come from our historical background. We started with R&D of CMOS ICs 53 years ago. In 1968, as a division of Saikos manufacturing company Daini Saikosha. We started out manufacturing quartz ICs for Saiko watches and have since developed and manufactured a variety of semiconductor products. We began offering products for the automotive market in the late 1990s and in 2003 we began selling products specifically for the automotive applications. Subsequently, the semiconductor division of the Cycle Instruments Incorporation was spun off and in the, as an independent company and changed its name to Applic Inc. in 2018. And in April of 2020, we became a member of Minibea Minitsumi Group. As you could see in previous slide, we have more than 20 years experience supporting analog semiconductors to the automotive market. Our products are used not only around the cockpit for audio and navigation, but also in powertrain ECUs and others. We have a long history of direct business with top Japanese OEMs, which requires the strictest quality. Of course, our ICs are also used by T1 globally throughout Europe, US, China, and Japan. Now let's get into the main topic of the webinar. As you may know, the automotive world has a saying called revolution once every 100 years. Technological innovation in each field is rapidly progressing particularly in connected, autonomous, shared and service and electric. Today, I will focus on autonomous. Two systems emerge when talking about autonomous. One is Advanced Driver Assistance System, AES, and the other is Autonomous Driving System. I will briefly describe these two systems. ADAS is a general term for functions that support driving. To ensure driver safety and comfort, ADAS wants the driver and controls the vehicle. Currently, surround sensing cameras, millimeter wave radar and ultrasonic sensors have been realized. As a result, the vehicle itself can record and process surrounding information and implement safety functions using these data. Examples are shown here, such as ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control, LKA, Line Keeping Assist, and EPS, Advanced Emergency Braking System.
vehicle to everything communication, which is V2N or vehicle to network, V2I, vehicle to infrastructure, V2P, vehicle to pedestrian, and V2V, vehicle to vehicle, have recently impl been implemented. The implementation of vehicle positioning with high accuracy using GNS and 3D maps is also progressing. These technologies have enabled more advanced autonomous driving such as LCA, lane change assist, and hands-off driving. In ADAS autonomous driving, the trend is to add level two functions before the realization of level three, which enables eyes of driving. ADAS continues to evolve for greater safety. The autonomous driving system has many advantages, such as relief for unprotected road users and no need to drive. Zero accidents, are set as biggest goal. In particular, it aims to reduce traffic accidents caused by driver negligence. Next, I will explain the relationship between ADAS and the autonomous driving. These figures shows the autonomous driving level defined by SAE. The boundary between ADAS and autonomous driving is between level two and level three. Level one and level two are driver support feature. Level three is conditional autonomous driving in limited area. The big barrier between them is the driving responsibility of cognition, anticipation, judgment and manipulation. At levels one and two, the human driver is responsible, supported by ADAS. At level three and above, the system becomes the responsible driver, which means autonomous driving. For this reason, autonomous driving systems require maneuvering skills that are equal to or better than those of humans. If this becomes possible, the world continues to move forward to, to, towards the establishment of safety and security and society. Next, let's think about what is needed to build a safe and secure transportation society. Considering the implementation of ADAS and autonomous driving in automotive for purpose of reduction traffic accidents, there is a risk that single system failure can lead to critical failures. Therefore, high safety and high quality is required. Even high quality systems include the possibility of failure and error. Functional safety is essential to reduce the risk of failure to an acceptable level. What does the system need to achieve functional safety? The answer is here. Automotive systems can achieve functional safety by adding safety mechanisms. There are two examples of safety mechanisms, fail stop and fail operational. Fail stop is to stop the vehicle safely because of failure. Therefore, drivers and passengers can avoid dangers such as vehicle runaway and explosion. Hazard lamps and horns will be used to notify nearby vehicles, but there is a risk for rear-end collisions with following vehicles. Instead, fail operational brings the vehicle to a safe place to prevent such rear-end collisions. This further increases the safety. Overall, it is necessary and important to provide ACL-compliant safety mechanisms for the best functional safety.
Let's see an example of realizing a safety mechanism. Look at the block diagram. This system has a main system and a redundant system. In the event of the main system's functional fail, the failure detection function shuts down the main system and runs a redundant system. This is called a redundant design. It is a method of design where backup functions takes over to prevent accidents or problems to reduce harm of the main function fails. Here is the failure detection in the center of the block diagram. As measured to add functions, using other parts to monitor for anomalies in main functions or make them known before they happen to protect them from damage. Voltage monitoring, which is also in the title of this webinar, works as a safety mechanism to prepare for risks of in-vehicle ECU failure due to voltage abnormality. Although not represented here, the safety mechanism also has time constraints, which is shown on the next slide. The system must switch to a safe state within the FTDI. FTDI means fault tolerant time interval, which is the minimum time span from the occurrence of the fault to a possible occurrence of a hazardous event without safety mechanism. FTDI depends on the system. The time from the occurrence of the fault to the fault detection is called the fault detection time interval, FDTI. The time it takes to complete the transition from fault detection to safe state is called the fault reaction time interval. <coughs> Sorry. And the sum of those two is fault handling time interval. It is necessary to reduce the time needed in each step in order to satisfy the FTDI set for each system. For example, if the FTDI is 300 milliseconds and it takes 200 milliseconds for the system to go into a safe state, the fault detection should be done within 100 milliseconds. Next, I will explain voltage monitoring as a safety mechanism using the an ECU as an example. This block diagram that shows a general ECU. It is assumed that the voltage input from the battery is supplied to the MCU via a step-down DC-DC. ECUs have various monitoring requirements to prepare for risk. For example, conventional MCU voltage monitoring monitors not only the voltage drop, but also the voltage rise. The MCU operation itself is monitored by a watchdog timer function as redundancy to the internal MCU monitoring. In many cases, the input voltage of the ECU is monitored as well. There is a method to do this using a voltage monitoring IC. Another method monitors the voltage divided by resistance of the internal AD converter of the MCU. In vehicle ECUs often receive power from, for example, <coughs> batteries through long harness. Thus, there is a need to monitor the supply of this power directly from the source reliably. High voltage monitoring is a pain in the neck. It is quite challenging for many engineers to implement this monitoring method correctly. Some of the challenges for the ECU input voltage monitoring is design are first, functional safety requirements. Second, mounting area and current consumption of the monitoring circuit. Third, accuracy assurance for a wide temperature range to ensure full functionality under all conditions. To overcome these challenges, EPLIC has developed a solution, which I will introduce now. The S 
191 LN series is a battery monitoring IC that integrates multiple functions into a single chip to address the previously mentioned challenges of ECU input voltage monitoring. It provides under voltage detection, over voltage detection and supply voltage divided output. Of course, it is qualified to ACQ 100 grade one. Overall, this IC integrates three key features for functional safety design with a small circuit footprint and high accuracy. The 191LN helps to address fault tolerant detection and reaction time interval with a high speed detection delay time of just 80 microseconds typically. This detail, delay time is extremely fast for a high withstand voltage monitoring IC. This high speed detection has the potential to allow for a system designed to move from not satisfying to satisfying to fault tolerant time interval. The design engineer could use this time savings to allocate more time to fault reaction to increase the safety of the design. Please look at the figure on the left. We have heard from the design engineers explaining that they implement voltage monitoring by using dividing resistors and the MVU internal AD converter. The voltage divider resistors are required to meet the vo low voltage specification of the MCU AD converter input. In this example, the battery voltage is divided through the resistor network from 12 to 2 volt nominal which allows the direct voltage monitoring of the main battery output with the MCU operated at just three volt. As mentioned previously, this operation introduces two issues, an increased mounting area and poor monitoring accuracy. Those issues are addressed by the S191LN series because it offers the industrious first supply voltage divided output. Here you can see how this works when using the divided supply voltage output function of the S191LN. This function generates and output a usable input voltage to the AD converter of the MCU. There is no need for external resistors nor FATs, which saves a lot of space. In addition, the failure rate of the whole system is reduced significantly by using the integrated solution of the S-191LN due to the less external components. The S-191LN also assures high accuracy of the output voltage over the whole temperature range. As you know already, there are many requirements for functional safety. One of them is to ensure multiple monitoring methods for redundancy. By using supply voltage divided output, which realizes both digital and analog voltage monitoring simultaneously, this requirement is met. Under voltage detection and over voltage detection digitally notifies the MCU that the voltage crossed the threshold while the supply voltage divided output provides an analog voltage signal to the MCU AD converter input. These 191LN features are key benefits for the functional safety design. Another key feature of the S191LN is a reduction of the physical footprint of the design. The figure on the left is a conventional high voltage monitoring circuit design example. As you can see, there is a large mounting area needed to accommodate the large number of external components 
including ICs. There is a need for resistors, for voltage dividing, FETs for using standby current, and different ICs for over and under voltage monitoring. Some designs add the protection diode to the ADC pin as shown in the diagram. The S191LN series integrates all this into one IC with no external components required. On top, the IC itself comes in an ultra small 2 mm by 3 mm HSMT package, which saves even more space. The next slide shows a footprint comparison between the conventional and the S191LN series circuit approach. As you can see, the area can be reduced by more than 75% from 45.6 square millimeter down to 10.1 square millimeter using the S191LN. By eliminating external components, there is also a significant reduction in the standby current of the ECU. The standby current flowing through the external components in the diagram on the left is approximately 100 microamp. The S191LN series reduces this standby current to zero as there are no external components. The current consumption of the S191LN is only 1.3 microamp typically, which is nearly 90% reduction in standby current of the whole system. As explained earlier, the external components such as voltage dividing resistors and FETs are no longer required when using the S191LN. In addition, the voltage monitoring pin has a built-in reverse connection protection diode to monitor the voltage in front of the diode safely. This means that S191LN can directly monitor a 12-volt battery. As a result, the variation of the diode forward voltage can be excluded from the monitoring accuracy, which improves the battery voltage monitoring accuracy significantly. Guaranteed accuracy of the IC is plus minus 1.5 percent from minus 40 degrees, 40 degrees C to plus 125 degrees C. We have reviewed the challenges of the high voltage monitoring, including functional safety requirements, large mounting area, increased external component count, standby current, and poor monitoring accuracy. The 191LN series solves all these issues and makes the design small, smart, and simple. As you can see in the chart, Applic has a rich lineup of high-voltage battery monitoring ICs beside the S191LN series that could meet the monitoring requirements of your application. The S191E series provides undervoltage and overvoltage detection. The S191 117 and 119 series has got undervoltage protection and supply voltage divided output. The S191 15 series is specialized in overvoltage detection. The S191-13 and S191-10 are focused to undervoltage detection. Our high voltage battery monitoring ICs are widely used in the market today. The S191-10 has been shipped more than 80 million pieces today. It is used in applications such as ADAS locator, vehicle to everything, telematics controls unit, battery management systems, in-vehicle infotainment, and various easy use. All these products 
can provide the information needed for safety analysis. Since the 1990s, Applix has supported global automotive suppliers and manufacturers with small, smart, and simple products. Applix offers the highest quality automotive products aligned with global quality requirements, including QS9000 and IATF 16949. For further customer satisfaction, we are developing ISO 26262 compliant products. We can provide quick technical design support, such as circuit proposals, simulation support, and evaluation boards. Applic can support the circuit designer in mastering the challenges that arise from the ever-evolving automotive requirements. In summary, the automotive industry is an industry in revolution once every 100 years. Now with a focus towards the establishment of safety and security without traffic accidents. To achieve this vision, ADAS and autonomous driving must have the highest quality and functional safety. To ensure functional safety, it is necessary to provide ACL compliant safety mechanisms with voltage monitoring as an effective safety mechanism for easy use. Applic helps the design engineers with functional design consideration by providing products with a fast detection and multiple monitoring functions with high accuracy in a small footprint package. I also would like to highlight that Applic offers, in addition to voltage monitoring ICs, a rich lineup of other automotive products, including power supply ICs, watchdog timers for MCU monitoring, connection diagnosis ICs, and a full lineup of e square prompts. For further information, please refer to our webpage or contact us directly. Thank you for participating in today's Applic webinar. Please answer the questionnaire to improve our products and service in the future. The presentation material for this webinar will be sent to respondents. We very appreciate your cooperation. The QR code on this slide is referencing to the product introduction page with more information about Applix voltage monitoring ICs. In addition, there's a special presentation called What is Functional Safety for your reference? Thank you very much for joining us today. Now I see that we have got already questions from some participants. Thank you very much. I would like to take the opportunity now to answer them shortly. First question is, is there a safety mechanism other than the electric circuit? Um, to answer this question, I would like to use the example of a railroad crossing, which is often used as a safety mechanism for functional safety. You also can find it on the Applic web page, this example, which I'm going to open now. One moment, please. So here on this web page, uh, on you find the introduction uh, about what is functional safety and the railroad crossing um, example is shown below in the mid of the web page. Um, uh, there are two ideas to implement safety mechanism in this uh, example. The first one is called functional safety, um, where um, the rail road um, is crossing 
um, the road traffic directly and um, to prevent any accidents there are certain mechanisms implemented like signs like uh, lamps blinking lamps like bells for audible uh, information that a train is approaching or bars to prevent directly the crossing of the vehicle um, so the uh, second idea how you can implement a safety mechanism in this uh, example is um, uh, the intrinsic, intrinsic safety, uh, which is a method to have trains and uh, road vehicle cross each other on separate levels, preventing accidents and to ensure the safety that so the car has a tunnel below the railroad track and there is uh, exactly no way to um, have accidents between the train and the cars. Next question. What are the applications that S-19 1LN is used in? Uh, this product was just released a few months ago. So the customers are still using it right now in something like a prototype stage. In general, we think uh, applications are under considerations like ADAS locator, camera ECU, head-up display, or similar. Third question. What is the actual standby current circuit requirement or limit? I would say it is case by case. Some OEMs want to keep it below 100 microamp per ECU, as I mentioned in my previous presentation. But we also have heard requests for even smaller values like 50 microamp or less. Our next question is the S-19 1LM an ASIL product? Mm. No, it isn't, but it is ASIL supportive, we say. We Applic has obtained AETF 16949 certification for this product. Uh, for in general, for our um, um, factories, we can provide information necessary for safety analysis, such as fit value, FMEA, and FMEDA. Uh, this is not limited to this product. We support a safety analysis for, for all our automotive products. Another question is related to fit value. Which standard fit value can you provide? Uh, we can provide data according to various standards like AEC TR62380 or AEC 61709 or even um, company-like uh, standards like for Siemens SN uh, 29500 or even FIDES, which is a French-based um, uh, standard for uh, uh, reliability. Then we have um, some questions related to um, the selection of the right S-19-1 LN. So, uh, for instance, please tell me how to set the detection voltage of the S-19-1 LN, or please tell me how to set the supplier voltage divided output. Uh, and uh, also some parameter related question, what is the operating voltage range of the S-19-1 LN? Uh, overall, I would like to explain it uh, using uh, directly the S-19 1LN datasheet, which I'm going to open now. One moment, please. Yeah, here you see our standard uh, datasheet with a front page. <clears throat> showing mostly all the information which were asked in your questions. For instance, a selection of the detection voltage you can find here on the top. So you can select uh, under voltage detection and over voltage detection voltages um, from 
those ranges in um, different step size for the under voltage you have 4.0 to 10 volts with 50 millivolt step variable and uh, the over voltage taken from 16 to 18 volt with 100 millivolt step uh, selection then the supply voltage divided output you can find here in this section this is selected uh, by selecting a certain series for instance if you select uh, the lmn type of the s station 19 l you get an um, by six divided output via um, the vpm out pin uh, for the input of your uh, microcontroller or if you select the PQR type of the S station 191N, you get in by 14 divided voltage, uh, input voltage for your microcontroller. The uh, operating voltage range is shown here in, in the lower section. So it's for this um, product from 3 volt to 36 volt. Can I buy samples online? Yes, you can buy many product samples online via um, the e-commerce sites, which are posted on our uh, web shop, on our homepage. So if you go to our uh, homepage, you have here a web shop button. And if you click there, you will be led to um, an overview which of the commercial e-commercial companies provides uh, samples via online order. Um, at the same time, not every product version of each part number may be listed in stock of those um, e-commerce platforms. Um, and uh, the S191LN uh, is introduced uh, freshly. That means uh, that currently you cannot buy for this specific type um, samples on these online platforms. So if you need samples, please write it in the questionnaire what you need and our sales staff will contact you. Can I buy evaluation boards online? In this case, you can't buy it online but uh, we have evaluation body re ready for uh, the S-191 NL. So um, if you need one, please write in the questionnaire uh, what type of evaluation board you need and our sales staff will contact you. Okay, those were, those were the questions which are already um, listed here. If you have more questions, please feel free to contact me or our sales staff um, to give you a fast response. We appreciate to support you. Thank you very much.